What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out. So when I've talked to you guys in the past about the brand damage that Star Wars has taken, you know, and how do you really equate that? Like, how do you visualize what the brand damage is looking like? You know, you can show like, OK, from The Force Awakens all the way down to the rise of Palpatine, there was about a 50 percent drop in terms of the box office. But to me, that doesn't really illustrate it strongly because some people will still say, oh, it still made a billion dollars. OK, yeah. OK, y'all can say that. Go ahead and say that all you want to. Here's a better way to illustrate the type of brand damage that Star Wars has taken. 519,000 downvotes, okay? Over a half milli, all right? A half a million downvotes, that's brand damage compared to only 177 upvotes or 170,000 upvotes. That's it, all right? When you do the math on this, that's about 75% of the people that decided to come and click either up or down. 75% of the people that came onto this video, the official trailer on the Star Wars official uh, YouTube page, clicked down. Said, no, thank you. Nah, we're not rocking with this, okay? It's like, close your eyes. Yeah, close your eyes. Look away. Look away, okay? That's how you got to do it, man. Yeah, look away. Don't look at this. Don't look at this. That's what they're saying over there in Lucasfilm. They don't want to see this number, all right? Because this number, again, it illustrates how far Star Wars has fallen. I mean, if you go back like 10 years ago, do you guys remember the hype that was surrounding this franchise 10 years ago? All right. 2014, right before The Force Awakens uh, came out the following year, 2015. You know, everybody was just like, oh, man, we getting another Star Wars movie. Yo, I can't wait for this thing to come out. People were pumped. People were excited. You know, we started getting like, we, you know, I don't even think we had the name of the movie yet. I don't think all we knew was episode seven, I think, at this point. But everybody was just drooling, salivating. Man, when do we start filming? Give us all the news. Let us know who's going to be in it. Oh, shoot. We're going to have Han, Luke and Leia back. Oh, hell yeah. You know, the excitement. OK, just the fevered pitched excitement that was going on at that time. All right. It was like you could like taste it. All right. You could feel it in the air. You know, the excitement for Star Wars. And I always use this as an example of that, too. Uh, when you're talking about, all right, uh, top lifetime grosses overall in the domestic market. Who's number one? It's Star Wars, The Force Awakens. OK, the, mil the movie that came out back in 2015, 936 milli. All right. Just domestically. OK, just in the domestic markets. I don't think this is a record that's ever going to be broken. You know, at least until like inflation finally catches up and the ticket prices get so high. And then there's some movie that comes out that just captures a lot of people's attention. But I mean, you go back here like Avengers Endgame is number two. Look, Avengers Endgame is about what, like about 80 million dollars off from this. So even with that, I mean, it has a big gap, you know, between one and two, you know, and then Spider-Man No Way Home and so on and so forth. Like these big films, these huge films that everybody went and watched, you know, after The Force Awakens dropped. They couldn't get to this number of nine hundred and thirty six million dollars. You know, so, I mean, you have to really sit back and think like that's how big Star Wars was. And then 10 years of Disney have absolutely destroyed any hype whatsoever. So now we're down to this. Uh, yeah. Uh, what? Five hundred and nineteen. OK, we're down to this mess. Five hundred and nineteen thousand downvotes. This is where people's feelings on this thing is at at this moment. And when you start asking yourself the question, who's to blame for this mess? OK, obviously, we start with Kathleen Kennedy. All right. She's the ringleader of this clown show. Uh, but you also got to go to the stars. All right. Amanda Stenberg on how the acolyte has made sci fi safe for black nerds. See, this it pisses me off that the content right now is being made by and ran by and starring people that have no concept of what Star Wars has been. All right. They think they're doing something new and fresh. OK. Oh, the acolyte is finally making sci fi safe for black nerds. You know, like we've been around. Where have you been? OK. Maybe it's safe for you, but black nerds have been loving this stuff forever in a day. OK. The geeks and the nerds way, way back in the day, we have always been rocking with Star Wars. Like for real. Check this out. Uh, shout out to Mac, okay, who had posted this video up on uh, X just a little bit ago, okay? He posted this video up, and you can see already, all right, just a, a bunch of different faces in the crowd. This is from 1983, back when uh, uh, Return of the Jedi dropped, okay? I want you to look at the different types of people that are out here. When they cry about, oh, we need more diversity in Star Wars. It's not enough diversity, blah, 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 okay? People of all backgrounds love Star Wars just the way it was. They wasn't tripping on diversity at all. Look at this diverse crowd. All I've got to say, the Jedi have returned. We're just fanatics out here waiting on Return of the Jedi. Three years in the making. We're waiting for this. 
I mean, you see right there, okay, just to back it up a little bit, all right? You see a black sister right there, okay? You got a brother on the previous one hanging out with a white guy. You see all kinds of different races and stuff in the background, all right? You know, you got a, I don't know if this is a Latino guy back here or whatever. I mean, just all kinds of different types of people, okay? And they're just hanging out there at just a random Star Wars, you know, viewing. You know, a random Return of the Jedi viewing. This is what it looked like. Yeah, like three years in the making, waiting for this. Some people don't idolize Darth Vader like I do. See, I want him to get Luke. And uh, I think that uh, that Luke will destroy Darth Vader. I guess Darth Vader will die. I'm not sure. I hope he does, and I love his... I mean, look at all the people of color that, oh, man, this thing has never been safe for me. These cats are right there on news, okay? Right there on the news just talking and saying, yo, man, Star Wars this, Star Wars that. How much they looking forward to it? How much they're going to love this thing? People of color that they keep crying about. Well, it's never been safe for black nerds. She looks like she's enjoying herself. She doesn't look like she's not safe where she's at right now, okay? This is what I'm talking about, man. The, just the level of nonsense that comes out of the cats that's creating Star Wars right now. That's the giant disconnect between the actual fans. Like these cats back here, they were the fans of Star Wars. You know, these are the people that got Star Wars kicked off. I'm going to mute this because there's like music coming up. But, yo, like this is who, and, and you can see the crowd, okay? All the different types of people that are hanging out here, all right? Black, white, whatever, okay? This is what it was. People were excited. People couldn't wait to go and watch it. And it wasn't, ha oh, it's not all white people. You can see that, okay? I mean, it just reminds me of back in the day, man, going to the movies back then. All right, man, we got to hurry up and scramble in, get our seats because we didn't have assigned seats. People were just happy to get a seat, you know? I mean, that's how exciting this stuff was, you know? And, and then at the end, look, another black dude. We're at the end playing Pinochle and having a great time. I wish I was there, and I'm going to try to get a part of the next movie myself. This has left me practically utterly speechless, actually, you know, but it was the best one ever. The big surprise I mean, just, was again, just you get the point, right? When has this not been safe for nerds of all colors, okay? Everybody was out here on the news talking about it, homie, in his uh, little clown wig and everything. You know, people just having a great time. It wasn't about all of this racial nonsense, okay? I had mentioned this the other day on the DA's office. I said back in the 80s and 90s, we had conquered a lot of this crap. We wasn't stressing off of color like these clowns today are stressing off of color, of skin color and all of that crap, okay? We just wanted to see good entertainment. That's it. That's all. That's what we were here for. And then I like this, okay? Uh, Mac followed up with this uh, same video then, but he contrasted it with this nonsense. Now, let's listen to this one. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, it just boils down to Star Wars is for everybody. And if you're not reflecting the people you see in the real world, in your fantasy worlds, there's a problem. And I think it was really great that we're... Thank you! Let's clap for diversity! And dinosaurs! <laughs> Now, did the people back in the day have any problem with, you know, oh, man, you know, there's not enough characters that look like me and sound like me and act like me and all of that, you know? And she's going to go on and say, but nobody had a problem with it, okay? Star Wars was at a much healthier place back in the 80s, you know, than where it is right now, you know, with these clowns from the High Republic doing their bullshit. It was in a much better place. <laughs> Dinosaurs, yes. But I just think it's like, that was for me the most exciting thing is because, you know, as a kid, I got Lando. <laughs> and then I got Mace Windu, like, Mace Windu was solid. At least he was a Jedi instead of like a guy who was just trying to get into Leia's trousers. But like, I love Lando, you guys. I wrote a book. Uh but see, here's the thing, man. Like, I didn't even like identify with Lando, you know? I identified with the type of character that I was at that age. I think I was 10. I was 10 when Empire, or um, when uh, Return to Jedi came out. And I identified with Han Solo. All right. That's who I identify with. You know, the rogue swashbuckling scoundrel. It had nothing to do with his skin color. OK, it had to do with his personality because I was always kind of a smart ass you know, out there on the playground, you know, always just talking smack and whatever. So it was like, all right, I'm more like this guy. You know, I'm just like a, a, a clown, a shit talker, you know, but I'm here. I'm a hero. I'm trying to save the day when 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 we played as friends when I was a kid. I was always Han Solo. I was never Lando. They always found some other kid to play Lando, but they never asked me to play Lando. Hey, hey, Derek, play Lando. Nobody ever said that. I was automatically, you know, Han Solo. And I was around white kids. I was around Asian kids. I was around just a, just a you know, a cultural mix of kids. And I was always, always Han Solo. It's just because of who I was. So again, even the kids back then, they didn't necessarily relate it that way. You know, this old black guy, you got to be, you know, Lando Calrissian. You know, that's who you need to be. And again, I love the character of Lando too. But again, that's like, I didn't identify with Lando. 
You know, we all thought Lando was kind of an asshole. We thought he was a bad guy. So I didn't want to identify with him, you know, at that time. But I mean, that's the whole thing, man. It's like these clowns, they are so focused, so laser focused on skin color and all of this crap, you know, female, male, skin color, you know, sexual orientation, all of that shit. That it just loses the entire point of Star Wars altogether is that it's about good versus evil. It's a battle for, you know, the, the, the soul of the galaxy, you know, things of that nature. Like that's what we are fighting for, you know, in terms of Star Wars. And that's what we're fighting for today, to be honest with you. They're fighting for the like, I guess, the soul of the nation or the world or whatever. That's what these clowns are doing. All right. And they want to place it right along identity lines. How do you identify in terms of your skin color, in terms of your sexual orientation or your gender or whatever? All right. Instead of just saying, yo, what is it that you value? What's important to you? OK, regardless of your skin color, what's important to you and what's important to them is their skin color. That's why they talk about diversity all the, all the live long day. All right. So, yeah, this is the reason why Star Wars is here. OK, this is the reason why it's here, because of these clowns. OK, because of this knucklehead. All right. Say, oh, like, you know, it's not finally safe for black nerds. It's always been safe for black nerds. Black nerds ain't never had a problem until you yo-yos got here. All right. And now all of a sudden it's like we got to divide everything up. We got to chop everybody up. The fan base is divided. Why? Because of clowns like this. All right. Because of these idiots right here. And this high republic trash. Anyway, you guys let me know what you think about this. Again, this is how I see the world right now. Okay, this is why Star Wars is where it's at, you know. And in my opinion, it's not better. Okay, it's far worse. Okay, it's far worse. You know, again, going back to 2015, this is where Star Wars was. All right. And today, this is where Star Wars is. All right. But you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.